Hey everybody, welcome back to Romer Adventure Network. Last week we brought you the Highland 60 built by Sasquatch Expedition Campers up in Silverton, Colorado. Today, Casey's bringing over his camper, the UEV Conqueror 490. We're gonna take a walk around that, check out all the features, tell you what we think. All that next. Think you got this thing ready? You gonna line it up? Can you back it into the driveway? Absolutely not. First test. I am still horrible at backing up a trailer. That's just the way it goes. Okay, the good news is I'm here to make as much fun of you as possible. Yeah. We got this. Horrible advice. So let's see, you want it backed over there, which means I gotta turn the trailer this way a little bit. Get it. Come on, baby. Just so you know, I can't Perfect. hear you. Perfect. Stop. Stop. Nice. I like how he's talking to the camera, but he wasn't talking loud enough for me to hear him 30 feet away. Well, I don't want uh, to yell at the people. That's true. What do you think? We can probably come back another foot if you want. I think we're fine. I just want you to be able to get cars. Oh, oh no, cars. no, no. You're fine. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. She's a beaut, Clark. Mm hmm Okay, one of the benefits of having a camper like this is the ease of setting up. So I was all ready to just jump in here and get going and show you how simple this is. But Casey says there's one problem we need to think about. There is a problem. Now, I haven't had this very long. Um, I've only had it out a few times. And I've run into an issue with the rain fly for the front. So as you'll see here in a sec, this section folds out. There's a whole sleeping area here. Uh, it's covered in canvas. It's fairly weatherproof canvas, to be honest. Okay. Like the water will bead to a certain extent, but there is also a rain fly that goes over this that unfolds. And number one, that rain fly is not that easy to get out as we'll see in a minute. All right. The bigger problem is that I have found uh, the rain fly rests in a channel like this that runs across the top. And on a long trip to New Mexico, I discovered rolling down the freeway that my rain fly was sliding out of its channel and it was hanging off the edge of the camper by a couple of feet. And so now the rain fly when traveling resides in the camper and that is a problem because it makes setting up kind of a pain if you're getting out and there's inclement weather. Uh, so I'll... Okay, well we just go get it and we pop it in and we're good to go. We'll pop it in. Do you have a ladder? We need a ladder. Or we need to be a couple feet taller. God dang it, that just is gonna be easy. <laughs> All right. So if you can just kind of like hold it straight while I try to feed. And once I get that in there, yeah, this is much easier for where I'm at. Just keep pushing. And, but like, I have to watch it to make sure it doesn't like get jammed. It wasn't so bad. <laughs> Yeah. It would suck if it was raining. Uh, it would. And I did do this while it was raining. Um, and it's not fun. And even now, while I'm up here, I'll undo this. But if you don't want to climb up here, the kind of the easiest way to get this rain fly out is actually to pop the top and unzip the windows and reach from the inside, in which case it's raining a bit. So much Velcro. So much Velcro. Okay, last night we got that rain fly finally deployed, but just in time for rain and darkness to set in. So we're back here today. We've done some more work on the camper. I've got the awnings deployed. Casey's inside getting it ready to show off to you guys. Uh, I think we're finally ready to do a proper tour. Okay, we are all set up and we are gonna do a quick walk around. So if you see something that you want more info on, plan on doing future videos, yeah. drop it in the comments and uh, we'll focus on that in a future episode. But yeah. quick walk around, start up top right here. Yeah, the awnings are just the big feature that people notice right away and they're fantastic. They really attracted us to the camper. Uh, <clears throat> I love how these work. You've got dual 180 awnings on either side. You've got these uh, poles that pop up to give you one, um, like weather, water 
shading, yeah. right? Um, they're really nice for that. But they also just provide a lot of extra headroom in here. That's really nice. Um, you'll see we've got the poles down right now, but these really aren't necessary unless it's very windy or you start weighing it down with awnings, which we'll talk about later. Um, so <clears throat> you can see we've got the other 180 done on this side. Dual awnings. Dual awnings. And it comes with a piece that zips in here and covers between this extra section also. So you can basically get like 300 degrees of uh, sun rain protection, which is really nice. Um, and you have one of the walls rolled up over here, yeah. which came in handy. Last night we were out here goofing around yeah. and uh, trying to keep the rain off of us while we just watched some football and hung out. And so I thought we'd just give you a little shot of what that yeah. actually looks like. You got what, three bags of yeah. walls when you got two awnings yeah. and that back piece. Yeah. It ends up being a lot of canvas. It's a lot. Um, okay. So, you know, you get the no CM mesh here. Uh, I think you get another one of these on the other side, right? So you can have like windows in your awnings. Uh, let's see. You zip in here. You can wall off either all the way around so that it becomes kind of like a 300 degree yurt. You can also zip in walls right here so you can kind of cordon off just these things as like rooms, right? So you can have kind of like the extra annex that's almost like an extra living room and then this can be open so if you're like with other people and everything you can gather around the kitchen and whatnot. Um, nice. Yeah, it's a really nice setup. Let's check out this pantry area. Yeah. I'm coming around. Okay. All right, so yeah, they call this the pantry. Got some light right here. Um, pretty sparse right now, because we haven't uh, been out recently, but you can have tons of snacks in here. This holds a lot of stuff. Um, and then you get these pass-throughs, which is sweet. For your midnight uh, snacks, you can snack close time. all this up, you know, to keep your animals and stuff away from it, and then you can still access it from inside. That's really cool. So much storage on the door, Man. on this door. Yeah. We got, met, we got what, uh, all these pockets. Pockets everywhere. The canvas is, you know, it's nice. It's very thick it's and durable, uh, but also light, right? Because this is a big, heavy camper. Uh, they call this like the wine cellar. Yeah, you know, I keep cooking oil, whiskey, whatever in here. And it's also provides a nice little extra flat surface for storing stuff, which is pretty cool. Got a nice table set up behind you. Yeah. So this comes from inside the camper, uh, but you can set it up out here and have a nice flat space to, you know, eat on, prep food, whatever. Uh, in addition, then you got like lots of nice little flat spaces everywhere. As you know, out overlanding, that's always kind of a premium, right? So let's talk about the kitchen, which is another question I get asked a ton. It's kind of the first thing everyone says when they start looking at it, it's like, where's the kitchen? Here you go. Uh, so we start over here. We've got the big Snowmaster fridge. Um, these come with a Snowmaster or an Ice Co. Seems to be kind of luck of the draw, but either in either case, you're getting the dual sided thing. So you can have it uh, as two fridges. You can do a fridge and a freezer or two freezers. So you have the capability down here on the control panel to independently control the temperature on each side so that's pretty sweet if you get the snowmaster you also get like a bluetooth controller that allows you to monitor the temperature of each side or set the temperature of each side nice i like having that we keep it in the car with us when we're in transit uh, just to kind of make sure everything's functioning okay in here um i'm definitely curious okay you're already on yeah it. i'm already on it so you're, you're ahead of me yeah okay stove it's right here stove. It is filthy. I apologize. Uh, it works okay. Like I've boiled coffee with it. Um, like most altitude. camping stoves. Yeah, most camping stoves. It's just okay. Um, this is your sink. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So no drain or anything. I mean, let's be honest. You're you're off the grid. You need to be conserving water and and, and all of that. So hot and cold. Yep. Hot and cold here. Um, if I had a gripe. 
Uh, it's kind of hard to purge all the water out of this faucet. So when you're storing it, you always end up leaking a little bit of water on here, which is why if you open this up, there's always like a little puddle of water in the stove that bothers me. And then sometimes that can drip down into this area that you should come around and look at, which is your silverware. What? Yeah. Okay. This always gets the looks uh, from people asking about the Conqueror. So this is pretty cool. Lots of glassware, although it's it's acrylic, so you're not going to leave glass anywhere. Um, bowls. There's more. Plates, silverware, uh, little tiny forks for your shrimp on the bobby. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah, I had to because these are big in Australia. So, you know, it comes with most of these utensils. Uh, the only thing I've added right now is that steel spatula. This is the only knife it comes with, and frankly... That's not a knife. It's not a knife. And, and having a, a serrated knife like that uh, as your only knife is, is not good in my opinion, but whatever. Maybe in another video I'll show you like the extra stuff I've added to that setup. But um, So that's the kitchen. I really like that all of this is over here on this side. Yeah, you know, all together. You could mm -hmm. wall this off. You could wall off the other side of the camper, have your kitchen open. That's pretty slick. Yeah. Shall we continue on? All right. Quick look at the rear. Yeah. Two jerry can holders. These are new for me. I haven't used them yet. Um, I haven't really been off grid enough to have need of gas, but that day is coming. You've got uh, the iconic Conquer grill. Okay, so this is your tire cover slash. It comes off and doubles as an actual grill. You put this over your fire pit and you can grill on it. So that's pretty slick. Also back in behind the spare wheel is an extra wheel bearing and hub assembly. So if you need to make a trail repair, uh, you have that already here. So that's pretty nice. Um, Stabilizer jacks down below. Yeah, the no stabilizers. No tools necessary. No tools, uh, no turning of anything. That's a really nice, simple design that um, is easy to deploy and stays very stable. Um, you've got, you know, your storage rack up here. That's see a, a lot really of, nice area. Yeah, it's nice. See a lot of people using it for firewood. I've stored a bunch of stuff up there, like our kind of outdoor extra shower annex and everything. That's pretty slick. You get the it comes with these straps as well as um, these snap in ring holders. Yeah. Um, let's see. So over here. Oh. Let's turn on our lights. I don't know if you got a look at that yet, but this controls the lights that are inside oh. the canopies. Those are really nice. That is slick. Yeah. Bright, but not too bright. Also inside the camper, uh, the button for this one is over there. So we'll get to that later, but uh, you get the exact same door over here uh, with the pop down shelf and, but not the bungee storage there. This tends to be the side of the camper where people do more like like bathroom stuff and everything so um that's you put your shampoo and uh, shampoo soaps right there and because toiletries. yeah because you got the shower right here okay um hot and cold controls right hey here yeah one of the first mods people do is to replace this hose with something longer so you can get the shower further away from the camper um <clears throat> Some models come with the ensuite shower enclosure like built right off the camper and um, that's more of like an Australian market thing. I don't know why you'd want to do that because then you're just going to get mud all over this enclosed area n near your campsite. So uh, people get a long hose and move it away. Um, window here, it's fine. We don't use it a lot. I don't like that the screen inside doesn't move. So um you can open the window have the no seal mesh but you can't open up the mesh I don't like that you've got a little extra storage pocket here not very big that's where i keep my wheel chocks i don't know we haven't seen on the other side but you get this exact storage space plus this storage space over here that's filled up with the tankless water heater you get some usb which is also doubled on the other side so that's pretty slick there's lots and lots of USB charging with this camper. And then 
in here is your AC and heat pump, and it's uh, it's fine. It works. It's just fine. It, yeah. it works fine. We'll probably talk about that yeah. more in a future video. Yeah, but you know the short answer is that it it requires shore power in an off grid trailer. How often are you really going to be hooked up to shore power? Um, so you really, if you're needing heat, um, I highly recommend you go with the diesel heater setup that you can run on anything. So, so up here in the front, I don't think we'll spend too much time on here, yeah. but you've got your propane Two bottles. 20 pound propane bottles in there. Um, this is your standard RV quick release propane hookup. So there's a hose in here for the kitchen that you hook up to the kitchen when it's deployed. And then in here, you know, storage and then, Ooh, <laughs> what? yeah, you got a full on compressor. Yep. And then the tank there. So that, uh, one, you can hook up some standard quick release air chuck stuff to this port to air up your tires and stuff. It comes with one of those. The main function of the air compressor in the tank is to store air for the air suspension. So you've got independent left and right up and down controls here uh, to raise and lower the trailer for being like in transit. You keep it a little lower. If you're going off road, you can raise it up for more clearance and then you can independently control those to level the trailer when you get to your campsite. So that's a nice feature that makes it pretty quick. Uh, once you get out and unhooked, uh, you can level the trailer real quick. So that's nice. That is pretty slick. Mm -hmm. I think uh, for this video, that's a really good overview of what's mm -hmm. going on outside the camper. Let's, uh, let's pop in, take a look. Let's pop in. <laughs> All right. You guys can hear my neighbor. She's actually just talking to herself really, really loudly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So before you come inside, I, you know, let's notice this, this is here so that you can reach the fridge when the fridge is inside. Okay. So you pack up the kitchen and everything for the night. Uh, but you can still access your cold drinks and your snacks from inside the camper. So that's real cool. All right, not All right, having to go in and out mm -hmm. in bad weather. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is kind of what this trailer is all about. I'm 6'2". This was a big deal for me, having something I could stand up in and be comfortable and not feel scrunched. And that's pretty rare in a trailer this size, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So... Um, this is, I deployed this by myself. It's kind of more of a two man job, but I do it by myself all the time. You get a lot of natural light if you open up these windows and airflow. So that's really nice. Um, no seal mesh everywhere. Um, you would think that with this canvas, that having this open in the rain would be an issue, but it has not been for us. We've had it deployed up in, over 24 hours of steady rain and not had any water inside. There is storage everywhere in this trailer. Yeah, so, all, all the way around. All the way around, man. I got sleeping bag in here. I think I've got, yeah, towels and stuff. Basically sheets, linens, more sleeping bags. These Conquer branded pillows came with it. So uh, more storage back more there. More storage, more linens up in here. And that's really, all the bedding and towels and linens and stuff that we need for several days out camping. And then you still got all of this over here, a couple of cubbies that go back into the side back here. You've got all of this. Um, that's a ton of storage. Again, you know, the canvas, people question it, but it does help keep the weight down and it's very effective. You've got another one down here. Um, and then all the stuff you see behind me, so there's storage everywhere. We could easily, with a family of four, store all of our clothes, linens, and everything in the camper, have it packed and ready to go kind of at a moment's notice and be able to go out for several days. So that's pretty slick. Yeah, and you're sitting here in this area where you could pull mm -hmm. that table from outside back in, yep. use the table, or throw it down for the sleeping yep. platform. Right yeah. Very nice. And these cushions come down, rest on that platform, and make a big bed. And then, how about uh, we switch sides and you show yeah. me what's behind? Yeah, let me pull this up. All right. So, this is the other kind of sleeping area. 
I don't spend a lot of time back here for good reason because, like I said, I'm 6'2". That's where the kids sleep. This is kind of a problem for me. Yeah, I would say so. Yep. Uh, but... And it does open up more than you can see on the camera. Yeah. Once you get back there, so it's not like claustrophobic on your Absolutely. head. Absolutely, yeah. The kids can sit up and play games and do whatever in there, so there's plenty of space. God, there's a ton of room in here. <laughs> there, there really is for this, you know, kind of class of camper. Um, let's see. So, I mean, let's talk about this guy and all what's going on over here. This is kind of horrible. Um, plays it's a DVDs. nice idea to have a TV. It is a nice idea. It's just not executed very well. It's in kind of the worst possible place. We run into it all the time getting in and out of the camper. It's stores are supposed to store like this, but you hit it with your shoulder as you're getting in. Seems like something they added for the American market uh, <laughs> as an afterthought. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably right about that. So we've been trying to figure out how to relocate it or a way to get rid of it altogether. But, um, yeah, so over here you've got all of your uh, light breakers and everything. Turn on your water pump, your fridge. Uh, this can show you your uh, battery status, fuses and circuit breakers in here. So let's talk charging because we already saw um, two different USB charging ports outside. You've got two right up here. You've got this cigarette lighter adapter. And then if you can see this little blue light, Okay. You got two more right there. Two more right here. And then there's one more in that back corner. Right there. Yeah. All uh, over. So, boy, I mean, you talk about the American market. I mean, you could charge a lot of devices at the same time in this camper. Um, it really so. looks like, you know, I'm just taking a look around. Yeah. And thinking about all that went into getting this set up. And, you know, this is really all about setting up in one place for a couple days yeah. and having enough storage all the way around. Take everything you want to spend those couple of days and enjoy yourself. Yeah, it's it's a base camping trailer. Now, you can do the bare bones setup and, and move it around every day if you want, but that's just, I don't think, the market they're really going after with this one. Yep, more yeah. of a family style. Yeah. Go somewhere, set up for a few days. I'll pop back out. Oh, and while we're jumping down, we should point that out too. So if you'll notice, um, there's no step here. And it, I did notice. Yeah. So it came with steps, um, but they were horrible. So we took them out immediately. They bolted in right here, in these big metal brackets that, uh, and then folded out. And there was a big problem with that because you couldn't close the doors with the steps deployed, uh, which was a pain if you're getting in and out of the trailer when there's bad weather or bugs or something and you don't want those getting in the camper. And then it also takes up this whole footprint of space right here on either side of the trailer. So when you close it up for the night, you lose, I don't know, 25% of your walking space inside the camper. It was just not a good design. So, um, you know, stay tuned. When I come up with a better solution, uh, we'll do a whole video on that because that those lasted about a day. We got it into our driveway, started messing around with the camper and said, those have to go. And we do, there's a lot yeah. of things that you're still trying to figure out. There's things with the electrical system and uh -huh. how it's supported and how you can uh, enhance uh, the electrical and support yourself off grid. There's a whole bunch of things that we want to cover with this camper yeah. and the, uh, you know, the future camper that's on its yeah. way. We'll do some comparisons. We'll set them up side by side. Hope you guys, you know, enjoyed this walk around. Again, leave any questions in the comments section, and we'll see what we can do in a future episode to uh, answer those for you on the UEB 490 by Conqueror. Give them an awkward wave. Awkward wave. <laughs>